today on an all-new Dr. Phil, a military cop with a life-changing confession. It's been very difficult for my family to accept that I'm transitioning to become a woman. You've raised him since he was two days old. I've raised him as a man. Have you withdrawn your love from him? No, I still love him. But I don't know if I can deal with him as a girl. For the first time... I'm worried about losing him. I don't want to lose him. He'll meet his dad. Are you willing to keep as open a mind as you possibly can? As a woman. Steph, please join us. It's what every father dreams of for his little boy. To grow up happy and healthy, find his high school sweetheart, go to prom, fall in love, graduate, make plans to raise a family behind a white picket fence. Those were Gary's hopes for his son, Zach, and they seem to be coming true. Zach tied the knot with his first love, Becky, joined the Air Force, and became a military police officer. Life seemed too good to be true, and Gary could not have been more proud. But just last week, Gary says his only son made a confession that shook him to the core. This military cop confessed, and I quote, I want to become a woman. Leaving his heartbroken father devastated and ready to cut his son off forever. Take a look. When he told me about the transition, I actually lost my mind and got mad and started yelling at him. I consider myself Zach's father. I raised Zach since he was two days old. I'm struggling a lot with this. Zach's in the military. I raised my son to be a boy, and he wants to become a girl. He's supposed to be a man. I was completely caught off guard. I was very hurt and confused. Can't sleep. Can he? When I see photos of Zach as a woman, it makes me actually sick to my stomach. I don't understand why he wants to be an ugly girl when he could be a beautiful man. It makes me feel like I failed in raising a man. I love Zach no matter what, but I don't know if I can take it. It's very tough. I feel like Zach has left me. I felt it was important to do this topic because you hear the high-profile stories like Caitlyn Jenner. You don't often realize the emotional toll it can take on a family, even if they are supportive. When it hits close to home, it can be difficult for some family members. And, Gary, this hurts you. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you say to yourself about this? I failed. You feel like you let him down? Definitely. And he's not technically your son. You're actually his uncle, but you've raised him since he was two days old. So he's your son as far as you're concerned. Yes. You're his father as far as he's concerned. Yes, sir. What are you saying to yourself? I just feel like I lost him. Like he's gone. How did you find out about this? A phone call to my wife and... When I come home, my wife told me, thank you. My wife told me Zach had called and said he wanted to be a girl. And I lost my mind. Did you talk to him? I yelled at him. Asked him why he would ever want to become a girl. Because I raised him as a man. Take me through the moment this was said to you. The moment that it hit you, what did you say to yourself? What, what was the first thing that went through your mind? What happened? What happened to him? Did you make any effort to understand it? No, sir. Why not? It's just nothing to understand? In your I don't know how to understand it. D did you make any effort to educate yourself about it, to learn anything about it, to find out anything about it? No, sir. It's just like, this is just, by God, not okay. Not okay. 
I love Zach. There's no... T I don't know how to take him as a girl. And it just seems like I failed. It just seems like something went wrong somewhere. So this is your fault? I don't know whose fault it is. I believe it's mine. Have you withdrawn your love from him? No. I still love him. I still love Zach, no matter what. But I don't know if I can deal with him as a girl. Before we meet the person, Gary Ray, since he was a baby, let's hear why Zach says he could no longer hide what he calls his authentic self. Take a look. Cross-dressing is something that I've done all my life. It started around the age of seven. I remember I put on a dress and heels, and it felt amazing. I remember feeling liberated and girly when I dressed in women's clothes. I didn't realize I was transgender when I first got married. I wasn't sure what was really going on with me. During that time, I really wanted answers. I did a lot of research and came to the conclusion that I was trans. When I look in the mirror, it's almost like seeing someone else. I'm not a man, so I don't want to see a man when I look in the mirror. I identify as a woman, mentally and sexually. At this stage, I feel like I'm more physically attracted to men. I love having long hair. I love having my nails done. I love makeup, clothes, and shoes, and everything about being a woman. That is when I'm the happiest. Well, it's been very difficult for my family to accept the fact that I'm transitioning to become a woman. When I told my uncle about Steph, he was furious and he hung up on the phone. I'm very committed to becoming Steph. I do anticipate having sexual reassignment surgery to become a woman. When I fully complete my transition, that's when I'll feel like I'm who I'm truly meant to be. All right, what's your reaction? Just be honest. Totally blows my mind. Something's wrong with him. Somebody got him. What do you mean? Somebody's done something to change him. That's what I feel. So you're saying something's gone crazy here. So something's really seriously crazy. Uh, what the hell happened? We're going to talk about this through the remainder of the show. Are you willing to just... Stay hooked up to that. Keep as open a mind as you possibly can. Hear everything that's said. Yes, I am. Because I, you know, I, I'm a strong believer that that knowledge is power. I'm not asking you to change your mind. I'm not asking you to change all your years of upbringing. I, I'm just asking if you'll just stay hooked up for this period of time and just just listen and see if maybe you learn something that that can help you to cope with, accommodate, fold in to what's going on. And, and to do it, you gotta be willing to listen, he gotta be willing to listen to you. Okay, Yes, sir. all right. When my producer first spoke mm. with Zach, he said he would feel more comfortable appearing on the show as Steph. So mm. next, Gary is going to sit face to face with who he considers his son, and meet Steph for the first time. That's after the break. So I would like to bring her out and have her speak to Gary. Fair enough? Yep. Steph walks on to Dr. Phil's stage, but will the moment be too much for Gary? And later, Zach confesses all to his young wife, Becky. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. 
This fighter says his toughest opponent is his ex. You should be punched in the face. They're fighting over their son. You think he's not being cared for? No, sir. Was she that way when you were married to her? I honestly don't remember. What do you mean you don't remember? Have you been hit in the head that much? His current wife. She's a devil. Ashley's Dracula's wife. Is taking swings at her as well. There was a huge rat hole at their house. It was flea infested. Today. I'm going to video this because she's crazy. I'm the crazy one. You're the one with red hair. This is at a Little League baseball practice. The gloves come off. You're trying to be me. Then why did you dye your hair red? We bicker about the color of someone's hair. Are you kidding me? That's tomorrow. My Uncle Gary's having a really hard time accepting the fact that I'm transitioning. My Uncle Gary thinks that he raised me in some way that made me trans, but I've always been this way. I'm worried about losing him. I don't want to lose him. From celebrities like Caitlyn Jenner and Laverne Cox, star of Netflix, Orange is the New Black, to hit TV shows like Transparent, and even all the way to the White House, where the first openly transgender staff member was just hired recently. The topic of being transgender is being openly discussed in many homes all across America. Gary says his world absolutely crumbled last week when he found out that his son, Zach, was transgender and wanted to transition into a woman named Steph. Now, Gary has only seen photos of Steph, so I would like to bring her out and have her speak to Gary. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Steph, please join us. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now, Gary. I'm hurt bad. Really bad. What do you what do you have to say? Why? I just I just want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about his reactions to this? I mean, you, you can see this is very raw for him. What are your feelings about about the impact on on, on your father, Gary. I'm, I'm really hurt, and I'm, I was kind of scared, honestly. Just seeing his reaction, how, I don't know if it was anger or if it was just upset. What do you want from him? I just, I, I just want you to understand that this has nothing to do with how you raised me or anything like that, and I just want you to be okay with I just want you to be okay with me being transgender. Steph, he feels like he's failed as a father. He feels like he, he let you down. He's gone back to the point of, he says, one time for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. He dressed up like a girl. I thought it was funny. At first, no, I surely don't. And what was the age? High school, maybe. It was, it was during high school. Uh-huh. And your reaction at uh, the time? I thought it was Halloween. You know, so I just went along with it. Actually pinched him on his behind and said he made a good-looking girl. But I was only joking. He's not a good-looking girl. He's a very beautiful man. Right. 
He feels that he's failed you as a father. Do you feel that this is a, a choice you've made? No, I, I've always been like this. I just hid it from everyone. How do you feel about it? I just feel like this is me. This is this is who I am. And That's... how long have you hidden this? As early as seven years old. I don't think he understands the burden that that is, how much energy that takes, how that affects you to live an inauthentic life. Just imagine waking up every day and seeing and being someone that you don't want to be. What do you, what do you hear in those words? What, what do you hear? I hear confusion. So you hear someone that is confused, mentally ill? Yes. What if this is not a mental illness? What if this individual is pre-wired to be a woman, but in a man's body? Just, I'm just saying, what if that is the case? What could you imagine that experience would be like for that person? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. Next, Stephanie's wife, Becky, is still reeling from her husband's revelations. You won't believe the shocking way she says she found out her first and only love was transitioning. We'll add her to the conversation after the break. We'll be right back. And I know I may have not been the best husband. I don't want to change. I don't want to continue living my life being somebody that I'm not just to make everyone happy. On the new season of Dr. Phil. I'm going to video this because she's crazy. I'm the crazy one. You're the one with the red hair. This is at a Little League baseball practice. You're trying to be me. No, then why did you dye your hair red? We bicker about the color of someone's hair. Are you kidding me? I just want to know the truth. Is my brother-in-law a monster? An uncle too affectionate with his 16-year-old niece. You're sending her a letter that says, I love you with all my heart. You put whipped cream on your neck, and Grace says you ask her to lick it off. I don't remember doing that. The creep meter is pegging over here. You say you have fled the state to protect your daughter. Yes, sir. My wife and I are accused of kidnapping our own child by my mother. What these parents don't know, they actually lost custody of their daughter. They will find out today for the very first time. Plus, you were the facialist to the stars. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox. Accused of hiring a hitman to kill her rival. Did you solicit someone to kill this man? It was one of those, oh, I could kill this person. I should find someone to take him out. You typed out a text message. I have found someone that can do this deed for me. Coming this fall on Dr. Phil. Gary says he was devastated when he found out his Air Force son was transgender and transitioning into a woman named Steph. But there is another family member who has been left grasping for straws as well. We're talking about Steph's wife, Becky. Now, before we meet her, I'd like to ask my Twitter followers if you would stay with your spouse if they wanted to transition to the opposite gender. Tweet hashtag Dr. Phil yes or hashtag Dr. Phil no. I'll reveal the results later in the show. Becky says she doesn't know what is more shocking, her husband <clears throat> wanting to become a woman or how this bombshell was revealed. Take a look. I found out about Zach's cross-dressing about two years after we began dating. I noticed my clothes messing, mostly lingerie, underwear, anything that would make him feel more feminine. One afternoon, I came home early from work and I saw him wearing my underwear. I was devastated. I was in shock. I just wanted him to take them off as quickly as possible so I could pretend like it wasn't even happening. My friends wanted me to leave him, 
but Zach kept reassuring me that he wasn't gay and that he just liked the feeling of women's clothing. So I went with that. Zach came home with a Valentine's Day gift, and for his gift, he wanted me to let him have sex with another man. I was very caught off guard by this. Zach got dressed up as a girl and took me to the nail salon and met up with the guy, and then the guy dropped him off 45 minutes later. I was very angry. One morning, I woke up to Zach having sex with another transgender. I lost all trust. I saw what I didn't want to see, and I felt what I didn't want to feel. Later, Zach told me he wanted to become a woman. That was a complete stab to my heart. Well, Becky says the aftermath of her husband's revelation has been, well, really just almost too much to bear. After Zach told me he wanted to become a woman, I didn't feel like my feelings even mattered. He wanted a boob job, laser hair removal, a full transformation. Hearing that, I was devastated, heartbroken, let down, and just really angry. I was hoping that it was a passing phase. At this point, I lost all trust for him. When Zach is Steph, he wants to go out. He wants to be the life of the party. What makes it worse is that Stephanie can be mean toward me. When Zach began going to transgender group meetings in our area, he began to act bossy and heartless as if it was only about him. Through all this, my emotional needs weren't being taken care of, and he didn't even apologize for it. Now Zach says he's only attracted to men. I feel betrayed, left out. What am I supposed to do now? He ruined my fairy tale marriage. Uh, Becky, I'm glad you're here and joining us. Um, this has been very difficult for you, right? How do you... How have you been talking about and describing this to yourself once it became clear to you what was happening here? I guess I was hoping that it was all like a phase, mm -hmm. that I wasn't real. If you have been aware of this since you were seven and you've become more aware of it as you matured and you had to have a pretty clear feeling about things when you got married. I knew I was different. I knew I, I liked the cross dress, but I didn't know that I wanted to transition to become a woman at that time that we got married. Uh -huh. What did you think at the time you got married? I, I never thought that my marriage was going to fail. Do you think there's a future for this marriage? Do you have any motivation to be married to a woman, this woman? I used to. I just, I've just grown, we've grown apart. And I really think that I want to go my separate way. What do you want to see happen? I don't believe in giving up on marriage, but like, why would you want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you? I hate to say this and I'm sorry, but he went to a um, support group and met somebody there, and um, ever since he met that person, it's like all of this happened. I walked in on him having sex with another transgender. So you walked in on Stephanie. I had nothing left. You tried to take your own life. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. That morning when I found my husband in bed with another transgender, I was really upset and I told Zach to tell the person he was with to leave. And he told me no. Right after that, I called the cops. When the cops came to escort that person out, Zach grabbed the keys and ran after her. I was really upset and I took over 200 prescription pills. I realized I made a mistake and called the paramedics. I was taken to the hospital and Zach did come and see me, but he refused to stay the night with me. Instead, he went right back out and got with the person I called him with. I felt so alone. I was willing to take my own life. And Zach didn't even seem to care. 
So tell me about leaving at the hospital. I walked in on him having sex with some another transgender. Mm. Okay, so you walked in on <clears throat> Stephanie. <clears throat> I, I had nothing left. And you tried to take your own life. Uh -huh. Was this before or after Valentine's Day? Before. Okay, what happened on Valentine's Day? He asked me if he could have sex with a man. And, and you agreed to this? <laughs> I don't know why I did. How, how do you feel about that? I, I definitely don't feel right about hearing it. It sounds bad. Gary, how's all this fitting in your ear? He's sick, really disrespectful, and selfish. But aside from the transgender part, just... Just being that way is disrespectful and selfish to me. Just treating another human being that way. You have two people that you love in extreme raw pain, but you seem very dispassionate about the whole thing. So I, I hide my emotions a lot. I'm hurting too. We've we've just grown apart. How, how about your father? I mean, he's obviously in as raw I, pain as as you could have. I just don't know how to take it. I because. I'm not gonna, I, I don't wanna change. I don't, I don't wanna go back to, to someone that I'm not. I don't wanna continue living my life being somebody that I'm not just to make everyone happy. Well, agreeing to be somebody you're not is one thing. Failing to have empathy or compassion for people that are experiencing pain is a whole other thing. I, I love them very much, and I don't want them to hurt because of a decision that I, that I made. I love them both a lot, and I just don't want them to be in pain over this. And, and I know that my male, my, I may have not been the best husband, but I know, that, I know that I still love Becky, and I love my uncle very much. I've already <laughs> said to Gary, you need to be willing to listen and hear and educate and understand and consider and, and, and try to have empathy and, and look through another point of view and another person's eyes. But doing what you need to do and have to do to be authentically who you are is not a license to be insensitive to those around you. Next, the first former member of the elite U.S. Navy SEALs to go public as a transgender is here. What she has to say to Becky may surprise you. We're going to add her to the conversation after the break. We'll be right back. As a wife, I completely sacrificed my own happiness to make our marriage work. When we're out in public together, I try to be affectionate, and he pulls away. I don't identify as a lesbian, so when Becky wants to hold hands and hug and kiss, I'm not comfortable with it. When Zach's dressed up, I have to call him Steph. I have sacrificed so much. I even went to the extreme of selling one of our cars to buy him laser hair removal so he could feel better about himself. But I don't feel like I'm getting the same in return. Zach has robbed me of the life he promised me. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, this fighter says his toughest opponent... You should be punched in the face. ...is his ex. You keep alienating me from my son. ...and his current wife... She's a devil. ...is taking swings at her as well. I'm going to video this because she's crazy. I'm the crazy one. You're the one with red hair. This is at a Little League baseball practice. Why did you dye your hair red? We bicker about the color of someone's hair. Are you kidding me? That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... There's only one egg that just tastes better with more vitamins and 25% less saturated fat. Only Eggland's best. Better taste. Better nutrition. Better eggs. About a year ago, I asked Becky if she would consider an open marriage. I just didn't believe it. Zach made me feel like I wasn't good enough. 
It just made me want to throw up my hands and give up. As you just heard, Becky says Steph's solution to their lack of intimacy was to enter into an open marriage where they both could be intimate with other men. <laughs> now, I want to add someone to this conversation. She is a highly decorated former Navy SEAL and member of the elite SEAL Team 6. She was deployed 13 times for combat and was awarded the Purple Heart and a Bronze Star. Now there is another accolade to add because Kristen is the first former U.S. SEAL to go public as being transgender. Please welcome congressional candidate Kristen Beck. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, you've been listening to everything that we've been talking about. Yep. Um, what, you're further down the road here. Uh, in this process, uh, then Steph, what uh, share some wisdom here? This is a tough road, and right now Steph is in puberty, basically. So think of it like being a teenager, and you need to kind of experience things and grow, and try to figure out where you are, where you fit in life, and how all this is going to work. You just have to kind of settle down a little bit, and remember the people that love you. You can see Gary loves you. And probably still wants to love you, but when you're totally gone like you are right now, it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be hard. And the when you say going like you are right now, what, what do you mean? You're going to totally destroy everything you have in order to feel this thing real quick. Your intention, as I heard on the tape, is you want to go all the way. You want to do hormone therapy. You want to do uh, the, hmm. the, the, the surgery. You, you want to go... All yes. the way, and that's something that is a really long process that involves a lot of psychological counseling, a lot of screening. That's because there's no coming back from some of yes. this. So that's a long process, and you're not even almost eligible for that at this <clears throat> point by anyone reputable. So when uh, Kristen is saying you got to kind of slow down. You, you, there are a lot of breaks in place. You're going to slow down. And what's saying is you want to slow down behaviorally as well, right? Yes, right, yes. And you know, I have to say to you, um, if, you know, Steph has to do what Steph has to do, then I, I have to tell you, oh. to spouses of, of people that are transitioning, you have to take care of yourself. There is no partner that is worth losing y yourself to the point that you take your own life because of a choice they make. Y you need to absolutely do what it takes to take care of and protect yourself. Do you agree with that? I 100% agree. And you have to understand that just like Steph, I knew this when I was in grade school. This is something that we struggled with and hid in order to not be beat up or killed. You understand that transgender people even today are being killed at about a rate of once per week here in America for being who we are, beat in death or stabbed. This is not an easy life. We don't choose this. This is something who we are. It's very deep inside. And we just have to live that way. I don't believe that. You don't believe what? What she, he just said or whatever it is. I don't believe it. I don't believe they were born that way. He, <clears throat> God made him as a man. He should be a man. Coming up, will Dr. Phil be able to close the gap between Steph and Uncle Gary? Would that make a difference to you? Maybe. Well, saying maybe is a step in the right direction. Have you recently gotten remarried and are struggling to blend your new family? Do your children disapprove of your new spouse and this is causing your home to be in constant turmoil? If that's true, you're not alone. And if your home is being torn apart because your new spouse and kids are just in conflict and can't get along, and you're being forced to choose between your spouse and your kids, then I want to talk to you about it. And if your adult children are refusing to be part of your life because you've got a new spouse, you may want my help with that too. So go to drphil.com if any of that applies to you. 
and tell us about your story because we're doing a series on blended families. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. If you knew that every brain begins feminine and is differentiated by how much testosterone bombards and is absorbed by that brain in early developmental states and differentiates males from females, would that be of any interest or relevance to you? If you knew that there are people that are in a male body but hardwired neurologically to be a female and in a female body hardwired to be male, would that make a difference to you? I mean, just if that were the case, would that make a difference to you? Just well, good, better, and different. Luck of the draw. That's just how it worked out. Would that be? Would that make a difference to you? I'm not asking you to accept it. I'm just I don't saying. I think so. Hy just hypothetically, if that were the case, would that make a difference to you? Maybe. I don't know what to say, really. Well, saying maybe is a step in the right direction. Well, that's what I was going to say. Ago, <laughs> a few minutes ago, you called me an it. That's true. You called me an inanimate object. I'm very sorry. Very disrespectful. I'm now, very Gary, sorry. But open mind and think about some things. I'm very closed-minded. And that's all I think Dr. Phil is asking you to do is to open your mind just a little bit. See, look, I Gary, guess. Let, me, let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I like you a lot. I, I think you are a very nice guy. I, I really do. And I think this is very raw for you right now. <laughs> and oh, you think that too? You're a good guy. You I, are a good I guy. do. I think this is very raw for you right now, and this has got to be overwhelming for you. I mean, it really does. All I'm asking is, are you willing to educate yourself and say, is it possible there are some things I don't know which would make some of this where... where this person that I love, which is still sitting here, looks a little different in the moment, but this person that I love, the spirit that I love, the soul that I love, the laughters that we shared, the experiences that we shared, those moments, those memories that we shared, still all here embodied, it, this person is just experiencing something that was not asked for. It's just a reality that is coming to pass. Given that that's a possibility, I'm, I might want to educate myself about it to see if, like, you know, oh my God, you know, maybe I am need to catch up a little on something. I mean, I'm just saying, is it just a possibility? Yes. And don't call a Navy SEAL it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I just, like, it's not thinking. Like, throw you over the roof or something. <laughs> At this point, I wish you would. <laughs> Next, my final thoughts uh, for Steph, Becky, Gary, Chris, and everybody after the break for my bye. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? That's more than one in five children. Now, these are our neighbors, our kids that play in the neighborhood, co-workers, friends' children. The problem is closer than you would think, but so is the solution. Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. Ready to get real? Go to drphil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to drphil.com today. Earlier in the show, I asked my Twitter followers, would you stay with your spouse if they wanted to transition to the opposite gender? And the results are... 
as follows. 76% say no, 24% say yes. Look, I know this is a controversial subject. I think knowledge is power, and that's all I ask people to do is open their minds to gathering information. I have learned in my own life, you don't have to love everything about someone mm -hmm. in order to love them. That's right. Okay. You don't have to love everything somebody does in order to love them. And if you look in the eyes, everything you've experienced together is still there. I want to thank all of my guests today. A very special thank to Kristen Beck, and best of luck in your campaign. I, I hope that really goes well for you. Uh, if you at home can relate to the story you've heard today and feel like you have no one to talk to, there are resources and numbers to call, and everything you say is confidential. Go to drphil.com. We'll have a list of resources there for you. For you guys, I know you're in different places, and locations. Uh, you, you know that Jay and I have Doctor on Demand, which is uh, a resource company that, that we have, which you can go to your smartphone or your computer and download the Doctor on Demand app, which you can get on iTunes or Google Play, and you can download it and you get medical help there, but we also have psychological services there. And I'm going to set that up for you guys where you can have a you know, board certified doctoral level therapist in the privacy of your own home. You can sit right there where you don't have to go even leave your house and you can sit there and they will walk you through this. I'm going to hand pick these people that specialize in helping you know and understand what's going mm -hmm. on and someone that can help you that is specifically trained in, in how to transition in a, an appropriate way. Uh, that can advocate for you and give you guidance in this area. And if those of you want to do this at home, as I say, you know where to find the app and do that. Thanks for being here, and uh, I wish everybody here the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.